right, construction champions, it's your host, Ron Newsbaum, and we're here for another amazing episode of Construction Champions Podcast, where we're burning down the damn house. Twice a week, Mondays and Thursdays, you can tune in to not, not hear from me. You know, most people here don't want to hear from Ron Newsbaum. You want to hear from my amazing guests. And today is no different different we have another amazing guest jason it is great to have you on the show today thanks ron uh looking forward to it thanks for having me on i i'm super excited to have this conversation but before we dive into it why don't you tell all the champions out there a little bit about yourself what got you here to today what excites you about the construction industry yeah yeah so uh my background actually is in business uh, accounting and finance. And um, I started my career, spent uh, close to nine, 10, close to 10 years in uh, public accounting uh, with uh, some of the large public accounting firms nationally or globally. So Deloitte being one of them. And uh, I actually got a lot of exposure to the construction industry, uh, worked with several clients in that space, uh, started uh, Signature Analytics, the company we have now in 2008. And one of our verticals and specialties is the construction space. And what we like to work with is individuals or companies that have that great idea, have a great company, um, and they're looking to grow and looking to scale. And as we know, as you grow and scale, um, you have to have an understanding of your trade and what you do, but you have to start learning a little bit more about all aspects of business, right? And The numbers and the financials are a big part of that. And that, in a lot of cases, can make or break you um, as a business owner. And so it's really a passion of ours to to make sure that our clients have that comfort, that visibility into the numbers so they can make the right decisions to achieve the goals that they have as a company, um, the goals they have in life, um, and, uh, and really be that sounding board to them from a financial perspective. Awesome. I love it. Because everything you said matters <laughs> when exactly. you're building a business. And it's a, it's a lot of times some of the stuff that can get lost when you're building yep. a construction business. So I love it. Yep. I'm excited to dive in. And I'm just going to ask you the million dollar question. And that is, what makes a construction champion? Yeah, I you know, I was thinking about that because you, you teed me up on that uh, before. And you know, for me, it's really about education, right? Um, or it's someone like yourself, right? I mean, what you're doing is you're educating the market. You're edu- educating uh, those business owners out there in the construction space. And so educating the market, because a lot of business owners, they start their business because they know construction, um, but they may not know all aspects of business, right? They don't know that, hey, you know, now I got to hire employees. I got to I got to understand how that works. I have to, uh, I have to, you know, account for my, you know, all the, the projects I have going on. I need to, to develop good reporting around that, you know, and, uh, you know, whip reporting and uh, job costing and those types of things. And to really uh, uh, understand, you know, how to run the business uh, at that macro level versus just being focused on that one area that you actually know or knew when you came in. And so, mm-hmm. Being a construction champion is somebody that is open to being educated um, so that they can take their, you know, take that information and grow from it. And somebody that is out there like yourself, that's really educating the market um, because there's not, you know, there's, there's not a lot of school or classes potentially you could go. And, and a lot of times it's learning on the job. Right. And so, um, you know, just do what you can and, and continue educating the market. Yeah, I mean, it's, that's that's a great, great answer to the question because, you know, one of the mindset shifts I have seen recently is a willingness to be educated. Like you have, you got a lot of great resources coming out and guys are starting to take take a hold of that, but it's still, I mean, it can be an uphill battle. Like it's, let's just face it. Let's have the open conversation. We're here at Construction Champions Podcast is to change the mindset around the industry to push us right. forward. I believe that people in the construction industry are no different than doctors and lawyers. And it's about time we step into that and start to own that. 
Yeah. Uh, but it's a hard road to go at when you're educating yeah. people like that. How how are you going about making sure that message lands or getting in front of people that in a way that they say, yeah, I want to know more. I want to learn. Yeah, yeah. I, I I love those people. But in most cases, unfortunately, they start to feel some sort of pain point too, right? Mm -hmm. Where they, they've grown fast. We work with a, a several company or a number of companies that they've grown so fast. Uh, we, we are working with one right now. They, they're only uh, three or four years old. They got some big contracts. Year one, they did 20 million. Year two, they did 60 million. Year three, you know, now they're going to do over 100 million in year three or four, and they can't keep up. And so they're starting to feel the pain of, of not having visibility into their financial information. They're starting to feel the pain of, you know, uh, man, just simply managing cash flow, right? Before, when you're smaller, you can kind of manage it in your head. And now, how do I manage cash flow? Um, when, when I can't manage it in my head, right? When the number I see in the bank account, I don't know what that really means anymore. Um, and so that's a big one. Understanding the profitability on the jobs and percentage, 1%, 2% per job makes a huge difference. And so if you have that visibility, now you can start to, to make better decisions on that. And mm -hmm. so really it starts with a lot of times, unfortunately it starts with, hey, I have a pain I'm talking to a third party. I'm talking to a bank. I need a line of credit and I'm talking to a surety. Um, I need bonding. Um, and I, I don't have the information or they're telling me I don't have the information that they need for me to move forward. And so that's step one. And, and if they're open, then to, that usually opens their mindset to, okay, now I want to have a conversation. I want to learn. Here's where I am now. But if I want to double, triple, quadruple in size, let's have that conversation about what that means, not only financially, but as we talked about before, just business perspective, business overall, right? You talk about, I mean, just business in, in general, a lot of businesses are the same. You have, you might have business development, you have sales, you know, sales and marketing, you have HR, you have finance and accounting, you have, you know, the operational pieces where usually where everybody's good at because that's why they started their business. They know how to run, you know, how to operate and build, build a house, right? Like your background was. Um, but it's those other areas that, we really want to educate and 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 that's what brings these companies from that lower level up to that you know breaking through those barriers mm. and it's very yeah. difficult to do that if you don't have that full understanding of all aspects yeah i mean i like to say construction is just business like i think we need to yep. stop separating the two like we people try to make it seem like construction it's di now construction's different it has its nuances yeah. and everything but at the end of the day if we just treat it as a business it will create great outcomes for us for our families for future generations i want to jump yep. back to something you you touched on there talking about scaling and scaling rapidly because yep. it's something we hear all the time in the construction industry is people go out, they start rocking and rolling, and the work is there. Yep. And they they get more work than they know what to do with. <laughs> Next thing, everything's out of control. They use, I, I find it hard yep. to believe it. We probably had an understanding of the numbers in our head to begin with, but it just starts to spire out of control so fast. What do you say to the guys that are, you know, they're just starting to get out there they're getting that traction and they're that we know they're going to get busy. How do they proactively not get in that bad place? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's where, you know, from, from my perspective and my, our focus is as, as signature analytics is on the financial side, right? So how do we set you up to be successful so that when you do get a job, <clears throat> are you using the right systems and the software to track that job? And then when you do get a job and you start that job, are you track? How are you tracking that and understanding where you are um, in the life cycle of that job and also the profitability of that job? And how you're tracking against that, right? I mean, this is the basic stuff, right? But how do you set yourself up so that as the the volume of jobs increases, uh, we're prepared for that and we have a process to produce that good financial information. Mm. I mean, the whip report in construction is is like the, mm -hmm. the holy grail, right? I mean, it's like, if you don't have good financials, anything else good, but if you have a solid whip report, you can at least see where you're tracking on a job. It tells you what your, your contract value is, where your costs are, 
um, where your mar you know, what your margin is tracking towards and how well you're doing. So at a minimum, uh, we want to have that. And, and what I've seen this in, in the, uh, just when it comes to accounting related software, not a lot of softwares have good, are able to produce, truly produce a whip report, right? So now you have a, a secondary software like a Procore that's bolted on to your QuickBooks or bolted on to your Sage or some, whatever other system you're using. And so that creates complexities as well, integration issues. And if you're not on top of it, not only setting it up the right way, but if you're not on top of it ongoing and moving forward, that's where you just start getting garbage data and then you start to lose track of really what's going on and you become so busy and inundated. Now you're just trying to get the jobs done. You're not enjoying life. Uh, you're, you, you're always worried about running out of cash, right? You feel like you should be so, you know, rolling in the dough, right? But you're, but you're, you're just, it's just, you're inundated in that day-to-day -day stuff. And so what we want to do is, is help our clients get out of that so they can see clearly, you know, the successes that they're also having. Hmm. Yeah. Cause I mean, you can get down into that pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it Every business up. owner can, right. All of a sudden you're stuck in the weeds and you're like, oh man, what, you know, I started this business because I want to be successful, but I also want flexibility in my life. Um, and you end up being a, a slave to your own company in a lot of ways. Well, yeah, we talk about that a lot on here is like that we all we all started the businesses for some reason. Like, yep. it, and it was it because I wanted to work more hours for less money. Yeah. But yeah. some at some point in time, we can lose sight of that because we don't implement the business aspect of stuff we don't take the time to do the stuff that's uncomfortable because we're good at what we do but we need to become good at also running a business and having the processes having the systems in place to be able to bring a job from the beginning to the end and then the number one thing people say i get people on here all the time what do they say know your numbers yeah, you have to know your numbers. So you have to have a system that has that stuff in place. Or I was, I mean, it's worse than driving a call with a, with no GPS, like exactly. you're not even though you're not, you're probably in reverse with no yeah. GPS, trying to go forward to a destination. Like that's what it's like if you don't have yeah. the, the right financial tracking systems in place. Yeah, and I'd say probably 90% of those people that said know your numbers are saying that because the first time around they didn't and they had they went through the through the same struggles, right? And we, we see that all the time. It's like the second time around, okay, now I'm gonna do it the right way, right? And and that's why I love shows like yours because you're trying to you're educating everybody, you're trying to help them to get in front of it, right? And mm -hmm. what we do and 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 building that infrastructure for long-term success, there's an investment there, right? And so a lot of in in cost um and a lot of business owners they it's a you know in the short term ah you know I, I don't know if i want to spend that on accounting right now i can just have the the bookkeeper over here do that right um and, and you can get away with it for a while but then you know i can tell you if you set your business up to scale in in the appropriate manner up front those that investment will pay off tenfold um mm. Peace of mind for one, um, and also being on top of you know taking advantage of things in the market, you know financing opportunities, um, acquisition opportunities. We talked to another uh, client or a, a company that we're talking to that we haven't started working with yet. They had an they had an opportunity to uh, make an acquisition of a, of a subcontractor, and they felt it was a perfect fit for what they're doing, and uh, they didn't have the financial leadership. To, to get the deal and get the information and get everything together in time where they, they lost out on that opportunity. Um, and that's, uh, you know, that's, that, that was tough for them to swallow. Right. Mm. And now, Hey, you know what, I'm not getting value here. And this is, you know, this is one reason why. So how do I, um, you know, what can we do so that this doesn't happen again? Makes perfect sense. I mean, it's because that's what ends up happening. If you don't have your stuff, like yeah. guys. And line of credit is the simple stuff, right? Um, mm -hmm. But that's that's tough too. Once you start growing and you need that line of credit, the first thing the bank is going to ask you for is your financials. And yeah. if you just print, the, print on QuickBooks and it's a big mess, they're going to give it back to you and say, come back when you, you know, when it's cleaned up. 
Well, and that's the thing is we don't proactively think about this stuff. You know, when we think about a line of credit is when we need a when we need the money. Credit. Yeah. <laughs> like, and that's the worst possible time yeah. to be going out. Like the, we have to be proactive with this stuff. We have to have an understanding of if this happens, what what is the course of action? And the only way to do that is to take a look at it and set it up now, not right. in the crunch time. Yeah. And I, I would say that's a good example on the banking side. Build that relationship with a banker right now, even if you don't need a line. <clears throat> and, you know, if you're if, if you're if you're thinking about who your banker is and you're saying, well, it's that nice person behind the desk or behind the counter when I walk into the branch, then you don't have a banker per se. Right. So there's great bankers out there. A lot of banks don't like construction they don't understand it they don't want to deal with it but there's a lot of banks that do and if you build that relationship and you start you have a deposit relationship with them to start you start having conversations about what you're looking to do you start giving them some financial information by the time you need a line of credit well one you probably have already gotten it um, but it's it's easy right or you're getting that line of credit you're saying hey you know what this is our goals this year, or this is our goals over the next couple of years. You can start to get that line of credit in place now. And may, you may not have to draw on it for six months or a year, but now you have it. And the right banks, you know, they're good with that. We There's a, a local bank that, you know, we work with that's big in the construction space. And um, they don't care if, if you're sitting on a line of credit that you're not using, right? A lot of banks say, hey, you know what, if you're not using the line, we're going to shut it down. And this bank is saying, well, it doesn't cost us anything. Um, we understand our metrics as a bank and understand how much our lines and you know are generally are being used. So we're comfortable with that. We want that to be there so that uh, we can get in early with our clients and and they can use it when they need it. Mm. Yeah, because they also understand how hectic it is to try to at the last minute pull all of this stuff yeah. off. And right. you're, you're better on both ends to proactively build that relationship, set that stuff up. And if you need it, you need it or you don't or what, like it's just having access to it because you built those relationships with the people that a lot of times we look at as like maybe being the bad guys in the yeah. whole grand scheme of things. But yeah. like I said, construction is just business. It's just, we happen to do construction and you have to look at it from that perspective. So, you yeah, know, absolutely. I'm, re- I'm excited. I'm excited to ask this next question because it, it just piques my curiosity. You're right in the thick of it. What are some of the trends that you're seeing here in 2024 in the, in the financial sector for the construction industry? What should guys be watching out for? What are yeah. things that might be coming down the pipeline that you're seeing that they need to start thinking about addressing? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. It it's still it's still pretty hot from what I see. Um, there's still a lot of demand out there. I talked about this one company uh, that that's been growing leaps and bounds um, in the uh, hot in the. I know you your residential background, right, Ron? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. In the residential space, um, it's still pretty hot, especially on the high end space. Um, you know, they got a backlog of two or three years right now. And um, so they can't even keep up in some cases. So it's hot, but it's still a weird market, right? The COVID market created a lot of weird challenges with, you know, lumber prices, you know, in- increasing in cost by seven times or whatever. And then it came back down and um, just some some parts of the of the general economy are are hot. Some are are down. Um, the uh, interest rates, you know, still um, the a lot of contractors are are living off of their backlog, right? When interest rates were a lot lower, so I think there's you know that should be something to be to be looking at. Right, interest rate high. You know, construction. They, construction doesn't like high interest rates, right? Um, nobody does, for that matter. But um, when interest rates go up, that could create more challenges in potential new jobs or new deals that might be coming into place. You know, you might have a development, and now with higher interest rates, the whole deal doesn't work, so it falls through, right? So that might be that might be a challenge. But 
hopefully it sounds like interest rates might be coming back down over the next six months, but um, the, the construction industry is, you know, again, watch the high interest rates, always look at your backlog, know your backlog, um, know your, uh, your cash flow capabilities. If you see your backlog declining, that's definitely the time to start looking at, okay, what does my cash flow look like? Um, talking to your bank, um, understanding, uh, you know, your expense structure of your organization. So you can start to make decisions earlier rather than when it's too late. Um, so those are all kind of key things that I'm, I'm kind of seeing right now. It's still just a, just an overall weird market. I think it's overall, it's pretty been pretty hot. Um, I keep hearing that it's continuing to go, but I'm, I'm waiting with those interest rates to see a potential slowdown. I just haven't seen much yet. Yeah. I don't know I what, what you've seen in the market. Yeah, no, I, it's the, the same thing that you're talking about. It's like the market has stayed hot. Interest rates hasn't affected it as much. I got a, a good friend of mine. He's in the RV business for one of the biggest RV dealers in the United States. And they've actually seen an influx. He, they're busy. They're setting record numbers. And this is how wow. I kind of, I kind of look. I was picking his brain to kind of think, I like, what does the trajectory for the construction industry look like with these interest yeah. rates? And I just asked, I asked that, like, what, what are people's thoughts on the interest rate? You're there, you're talking to these people every day, and what he's hearing is people have like that sticker shock has set in. They're uh -huh. over it. They what they want to do is have this and interest rates are probably going to come down. But what's the price on stuff going to do? And they would just rather move forward with it right now and yeah. just take the hit on the interest and hopefully be able to refinance it in a couple of years. So I yeah. thought that was a. a a strange because uh, that's an item that you don't have to have like and so yeah, if people exactly. are thinking that way on an item they don't have to have well you have to have a home so yep. like yep. what what is that looking like and mm -hmm. i i think i see you know a lot of guys i talk no one like it's besides the typical winter slowdowns for some places and some states like everybody's rocking and rolling i know in my town there's like five houses being built right now. There's multiple remodelers happening. Like you can't go yep. anywhere without seeing construction happening. Yep. Yeah. I, I see the same thing. So that's why I'm, I'm still, it's hot. I'm just, when you see the interest rates, like they are, I, I think there's a, from a financial perspective, it has to be acknowledged and you always want to be looking and, and planning in advance in case, you know, scenario planning, if something happens or if there's a slowdown, how does that impact my business? And so we do a lot of budgeting. We do a lot of forecasting with our clients, not only on cash flows, but as their, their business as a whole. Um, mm -hmm. And what does that look like? And so that's where they, you know, these companies, they can be really be prepared um, if that's the case. I mean, when it's hot, everybody's happy. Um, but that's why you see when, when there's a downturn, you know, all of a sudden there's, you know, half as many construction companies in the market because half, you know, went out of business, right. Or decided to give it up. Um, and you want to be, and we want to be, and, you know, working and we want to, we want our clients to be the, the ones that are continuing to survive and thrive even in all types of markets. Well, it's the same thing <laughs> where we talked about with the loans, like you want to yeah. be proactive with this stuff and it's, yeah. I mean, do your due diligence. Like even when things are good, you still you always have to be building a business thinking sustainable. Like how do we continue to survive no matter what happens? Because I mean, if COVID taught us anything, anything can happen. Like it's right, literally right, yeah. what yeah, like, literally that's the anything takeaway happen, from yeah. that. Like the unimaginable can happen. You can get completely shut down overnight and there's not a whole lot you could do about it. like, so you have to always be preparing for what is that, why you build the business. And that's why it's so important to have your financials intact and understand your numbers. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's that planning phase of it. It's being prepared for what might happen in the future or different scenarios that you talked about. And it's also planning um, you know, it ties into owner or management um, income 
as well, right? So we can start to plan based on different scenarios what you should be taking or what you can take from the business from an income perspective. Mm-hmm. And that gives your 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 family um, a lot more stability and allows you to make per- better personal decisions on on how you manage your life, how you know how you invest outside of your business, those types of things. And so that is a, also a critical component to just understanding the numbers of your business. Um, but, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll just go the the key reporting, just if, if you're not doing anything else, I would, you know, recommend close, try to close the books every month. Make sure you have a whip reporting that you have comfort in and confidence in so you can manage your engagements. Understand how, how to do job costing is obviously critical. Um, and then, you know, Make sure that um, you're always comparing against some sort of a budget as well. Um, what, how are we doing versus what we felt we should be doing? Or if we're 20% margin on a job, why can't we be 21% or 22%? You know, when you're when you're uh, 20 million or 50, even 10 million dollars, you know, one percent, that's that's 100 grand, right? That flows through the bottom line, right? So how do we how do we even look at that profitability from, from a percentage point, right? And say, hey, how, how do we get that extra one or two percentage points on every job? We become that much more profitable, mm-hmm. right? That falls down to the bottom line um, and it gives you a lot more options as you move forward. I love it, man. <laughs> great, great stuff today. Looks like I got a little bit of feedback there. But so for everybody out there that's listening, how would they follow you, find you, connect with you, learn more about what you do? Yeah, sure. So our company is Signature Analytics. It's signatureanalytics.com. Uh, so pretty straightforward. Uh, our focus is on you know, ongoing. Uh, it's basically outsourced or fractional accounting and CFO advisory support. Um, so we work with companies that to provide that financial leadership. Um, a lot of times companies, they don't need necessarily need to pay for a full-time controller. Uh, we take over that role and manage the, the accounting and finance function of their business. Um, and uh, you can, obviously, you can call me direct at any time, 858-228-5643. And then I always like to uh, talk to business owners. If you have a question, want to reach out, you can do that. Uh, my email is the letter J, Kruger, K-R-U-G-E-R, at signatureanalytics.com. Awesome, man. Well, thank you for being on the show today. Yeah, thanks so much, Ron. Awesome. Construction Champions, another great episode where we definitely dove into why you should always be preparing for that possible rainy day and why being proactive about it. Like, okay, you don't want to go buy the damn umbrella the morning of the storm because they're probably going to be sold out of them. Like I live over on the East Coast. If there's a hurricane coming this way and you wait until, you know, six hours before it's supposed to show up and you're like, I'm going to start doing stuff to prepare for this. No one's going to have anything or they're already going to be closed. It's the same thing with your business. If you're going to need to go get a loan in the future or you're wanting to make an investment somewhere in your business. The only way to do that stuff is to be proactive about it. We talk about financials on here all the time. Know your numbers. I know you guys have heard me say it is one of the best hires you can possibly ever make is a controller because Mm -hmm. it's somebody that understands how to put all the numbers in the right places and tell you the right stuff. So what Jason's talking about doing on a fractional perspective is perfect for guys that aren't ready to bring that hire in, but you still need the information. Because at the end of the day, we need the information. I can tell you, I've been in positions where we didn't have the information. I've been in the positions where we've had bad information. And I have been in positions where we had great information. And I would choose the great information time over time at whatever cost it took me to get to that. So Construction Champions, Stop struggling when it comes to your financials. We talk, like I said, we talk about it on here all the time. I can't say that enough. Like this is something you're hearing. And I know you're not just hearing it from me because it is something that the industry needs to get better at. Because one thing 
about business is most businesses have this figured out. But for some reason in construction, it's one of those elements that we're always like, well, I'll get to that at some point in time. But it's a basic fundamental of business. And don't forget that. As you grow your business, you have to have this information. You have to have this data. So construction champions, make sure you share our show, like, and subscribe. And until next time, be the champion you were meant to be. Introducing Buildercoms, your all-in-one construction communication software. Say goodbye to communication mishaps that cause frustration among builders, contractors, and clients. The Buildercoms platform unifies communications, making it easy for you to chat, share updates, and collaborate effectively in one place. Experience the transformation in construction project management with Buildercoms. Visit us at Buildercoms.com to learn more and start streamlining your projects today.